let's start this. Okay, so this is about um, a botnet. So I assume everybody knows what a botnet is, but I'll cover some of that uh, at the start anyway. Now this is, um, why is this relevant at the moment? Because this is a botnet or a cyber attacks, which are around a botnet called Dark Nexus, which is specifically exploiting COVID-19 at the moment because it's primarily attacking home routers. So, uh, and by the way, I'll give a test to everybody for them to check their own router while we're online, which might be uh, quite useful. So the uh, thing is here is that um, if we move along, that's me, that's part of the things. A little bit more about background me, here we are. So it's essentially uh, cyber threat analysis, cyber threat intelligence. Uh, work with NATO in NISA and other parts there. And also, I'd like to stress that our whole background is about attack and threat prevention. It's about prevention. So that's why this is very relevant at the moment, because this is about public health. OK, we talk about public health in terms of COVID-19, but also in terms of we should be talking that in terms of cyber attacks, cyber crime and all the rest that's hosted. And it's a simple thing. People have to remember all cyber crime, cyber attacks and internet badness is hosted and trafficked and routed by someone somewhere. So that's the important part to remember. This is not magic. This all comes from somebody and is uh, hosted and trafficked by someone. So let's move on to the actual uh, part. Uh, just a brief introduction. This is also a background of Samargo, this is a, uh, a Horizon 2020 project, which has uh, gained European funding and is, uh, and is also about information hiding and uh, malware. So that's the uh, Samargo.eu, uh, which is uh, partly behind a lot of this research. So let's have a look. It's also the case is, is that, let's start with a simple thing. If you can't measure it, you can't manage it, which is an old, uh, Peter Drucker's statements are sort of here of marketing, but it's uh, but very clear. So metrics produces the evidences and management provides the solutions. So that's a part of us is, if you like to think, is our biggest job is to find out what is going on. So the thing is, is it's also the metrics is in cybersecurity. Our argument is the metrics is is epidemiology and we use the same techniques as in epidemiology and disease control and as you'll see this is has interesting parallels to COVID-19. So if we look at a couple of just facts and figures to start with yesterday for example and today uh, literally the same there is over 300 million attacks on servers PCs around the world that are measurable. And the attackers, believe it or not, that's the main attackers. 23 million from the US, 30 million from Russia, uh, but also five and a half million and nearly five million from Germany and the Netherlands. There's the, there's where the attacks go to in terms of one side and on the other side, that's also the attackers. So the case is it's 9% above normal and it's what you have to do is look at the definitions. So it's who, what, where, and why? So it's bad parts, automated threats, malware, botnets, and so on. And of course, we look at this in main malware attacks is phishing, backdoors, brute force, hijacking IoT. And that's why this is very relevant to this part, because this is all about attacking IoT devices. And in the great, excellent presentation we just saw from George, what we also have to remember is this is all very good for the 5G process and the vehicles. But remember, uh, talking this, anything you put on, if it's reachable by a uh, IP address, uh, I can hijack it. So that's what you've got to remember also about all the background of this as well. So, so what is the IoT botnet? Well, we know what an IoT is, Internet of Things. It's a group of hacked computers or smart devices which are pulled together and being co-opted for illicit purposes against the intention or against the uh, basis of what they're being used for. Uh, so primarily they're user agents. Now user agents is 
when you go to a website, for example, or when you go to an IP address, you know, you're using a browser normally or so on. That's the uh, user agents will show on that as uh, and partly in the botnets devices that attack tools are part of the botnets in control and uh, command facilities, which is controlling the botnets from a core central point. And it's also this thing of the Internet of Things is not only made up of computers, but also cardiac monitors, household industrial appliances, automobiles that we've just talked about, mechanical sensors, other devices, anything that's equipped with an IP address. So known as the uh, as things. OK, so let's look at some metrics of this. We test and run and through our, uh, the different community, we know that there's botnets there's about 9,500 command and control servers on about 1,100 different networks. And that's the operational side of botnets and so on. And also we know that 20 to 25, 8 percent of all web traffic now is bad bots and botnets and so on. So this means, and if you look now, is that IoT sector is the main attack center that's going for this. It's just, if you look at the 20 billion plus devices forecasted by 2022, uh, many are targeted automatically by bad bots and for law also used for launching bad bots. So, and if you would want to work this out, I mean, this is an unbelievable number. If you think about it, 23% of the world's bandwidth is taken up by bad bots and botnets and so on. I mean, this is automated threats. We know that uh, currently now, 52% of all traffic on the internet is automated, is bots essentially. Now, that's a lot of good bots as well, like Google and so on like that. But, you know, the 23% is bad bots. And if you work that out, the cost in operational terms, in networking terms, it's about 10,000 a month to operate a, a gigabit per second uh, uh, server and uh, bandwidth. So the potential cost it's costing the world is about 680 billion is the cost of bad bots and botnets and so on. So. If you actually uh, look at it from that side, you actually look at this as a, um, a financial uh, hit as well as not just the obvious hacking hit. Uh, and as well, there's about 68,000, no, exactly 68,400 more ASs. That's ASNs, that's essentially ISPs, hosts, different servers. But 500 are responsible for 88, 85% of all the bandits and the bad bots, botnets, and automated threats. So our focus from a security point of view is that it's a lot narrower focus than people give it credit for. This isn't quite as random as people think. So the thing is as well, bad bots, they can emulate human-like behavior. And the better ones, and this one I'll show you in uh, Dark Nexus, is maybe the best ever in terms of emulating human-like behavior. So of course, this is evolved web scraping, vulnerability scanning, brute force attacks, data mining, crypto jacking, online fraud, DNS tunneling, and downtime, and DDoS, and often all the pre-actions of a data breach. So the thing is, is what's also interesting from a metrics point of view is that 75% of people will say, oh, this is a DDoS attack, uh, in other words, a uh, you know, uh, uh, try to overwhelm a website or overwhelm <laughs> servers. And we actually find that, in fact, that 75% of these measurable are not actually DDoS attacks. They're just the side effect of of the activity you'll see above you. Yes, sir. Uh, and as well, majority of bad bots originate from data centers. And the example we share it here is a classic example of this. And so, so but also, we have to realize that 40% of business and government networks in the US and Europe have shown evidence of DNS tunneling. That's tunneling under the system to actually, if you like, hijack DNS. Now, that's domain name system. So when you type in and go to a website, that's you're accessing a DNS server somewhere that's going to take you to that website. But the basis is, is therefore, 40% of all networks in, in Europe now have shown evidence of uh, DNS tunneling. 
And of course, also, if you look, it's not just on the thing, it's mobile side as well. 500 million users are now receiving adware from bad bots. Uh, now, these are all factual metrics of what's going on at the moment. So let's have a look at there. It's specifically it's our our friend Dark Nexus. So why the baddest? So if you look at this diagram, you could see some of the things of how Dark Nexus works. It's um, basically it's it's gaining credentials. It's hijacking the infected device, turning that infected device, which is interesting one side because Often botnets, mainly, if they hijack a device or hijack a PC, they call what's called bricking, and it's so bricking means just like a brick. It turns the the PC or the device into a brick, and therefore can't do anything. Uh, Dark Nexus is different because it doesn't brick the device; it actually converts it into a super hacking machine, as such. Yeah. And so, and under direct control of whoever controls the Dark Nexus network, uh, and it and it's very good at mimicking all real human workflows across web applications to behave like real users. So very hard to detect from a conventional user perspective. Also, bots are obfuscated their activity by reverse engineering detection systems. So if you have a detection system on your router or device this the actual bots can reverse engineer that detection system plus as well it's mimicking behavior of other botnets which is quite clever if you think so we have a lot of reports from our community of oh well a lot more mirai attacks or qbot attacks which are old botnets and therefore not essentially active but still there's a lot of maybe infected machines which still have those the dark nexus is mimicking older and other botnets so therefore it makes it even more difficult to decide what actual botnet is actually attacking what so if you look at this it's and the final thing of why this is also very apt for uh, around this covid-19 and this pandemic this is t is potentially turning into a pandemic in a uh, e form side it's because it's highly highly virulent in terms of its spread so here's some of the malwares that those uh, recognize that that have been discovered actually on dark nexus uh, uh, affected machines and devices and you can see the different sort of uh, the list there of detected malware and you'll see a lot of those ones are now have been specifically recognized as dark nexus but some are still seen as mirai uh, uh, malware or other types of malware actually they're all from Dark Nexus, so and controlled by the Dark Nexus uh, botnet. So, and the, what do these malwares do? The, they do a lot of different things. They basically a Trojan. They control the device and can do a lot of other acti a lot of activities that on the on the device that they've infected. So let's look at this bot sophistication as such. There's a standard thing. This is what we use in in our industry is that to sort of in terms of interpreting of bad bots, if you say bad bot, does it is it a level one, two, three, four? Uh, and the things are really uh, all about behavioral analysis. So it's to, in terms of what they actually do or their intent or their in, in, uh, interaction. And most are actually one, two, or three. And the what the four are uh, now guess what? Dark Nexus bots are all level four. They're all incredibly sophisticated in being able to handle URL traversal and, and different patterns and different interaction signals. So uh, can be used for a lot of different uh, activities. Here's a thing to, now this is what's surprising is if you actually look at the attack traffic, this is the uh, main top main attacks. This was this was done in an exercise with uh, uh, let's say colleagues at uh, in Belgium at, um, at Teledec Group, which is a uh, uh, essentially uh, essentially a um, ISP in Belgium, and we are actually looking at this in different ways, comparing things. We also collected a lot of data from the dark nets to compare with what's actually collected uh, by uh, partners in this sense. So you can see where all these came from, and a lot of these now 
using different sort of uh, attack uh, things. These were actually using based on RDP scanners. Now, RDP scanner is essentially it's scanning to gain access to Windows control systems. And of course, as well, in just one example, there was 53,000 attacks on one Belgian time, you know, it's in one day. So pretty fierce attacking process. Now, let's come out to this. This is mainly after routers and home routers. So the thing is, is that's why you have to look at this thing of, a, uh, you know, everybody should, after this session, should check their router. I'll give you a way to check that. But the basis is how many people who we're even listening to now, if they were to check their router, have one of these user admin or uh, uh, passwords on their routers. Now, these are the ones which are brute force passwords, which automatically uh, are used by Dark Nexus to actually uh, try and brute force uh, uh, router uh, access. So, of course, that thing, you know, the obvious thing of the admin, admin, and the admin one, two, three, four, five, six, or so on, uh, classic problems. But you'll also see some, obviously, what look like pretty good passwords. But the reason they're in there, or the reason Dark Nexus used them, because they're the ones that have come standard with certain routers and certain supply of routers. So they're, they're actually going after a wide range, and they keep on hammering at any router they can get to. So where do most attacks originate? Well, we've seen in terms of bad bots generally, uh, a lot of them come from the Russian Federation, from, uh, but also Germany, Netherlands, in other words, big data centers activity and so on. And you can see one on there, which you'd say, if you see at the bottom, you'll see Ireland, and you say, oh, Ireland is a big attack. Well, that's the center for AWS in Europe, uh, uh, which is Amazon's uh, uh, service systems, so, uh, which are heavily infected with uh, bots and bad bots. Let's look at why the biggest. Well, it's not yet. Let me just stress that. But just like COVID-19 disease control, you actually look at trying to forecast where this is going to go, unless we can do something about it. And the whole point is, is at the moment, we now have over 100,000 infected victims, if you like, uh, infected systems. Now, if you actually look at that from over three months from late March up to now early June, you know, the forecast is, is by later this year, that could be at the size of about uh, 10 million bots. Now, let me just stress, 10 million bots would take down the whole of Belgium and keep it offline for two weeks. There's how you start to look at the metrics and the size of these things. So our biggest job is to prevent Dark Nexus getting that big. So let's let's look at, uh, and also you can see a little bit of a history of uh, well-known botnets. Uh, the biggest one was Mariposa in actually 2008, some years ago now, which got up to about 12 and a half million. Uh, in fact, we'd argue now that Dark Nexus has no limits because it is so virulent and has such an ability to spread. So the case is, is that we've forecasted 10 million if we do nothing about it. And, and probably that may be even uh, much higher than that figure. What's it been used for? Well, as arguments, it's going to be used or it isn't really. Act at the moment, it's just attacking everything. So it's attacking IoT devices anywhere it can get to in terms of particularly routers, in terms of different IoT devices, uh, even um, temperature sensors it's going after. So the case is that we've picked up a lot of those which are uh, actually being affected as well. So the case is, is that there you see in terms of the use on that on the right hand side sort of historically. Uh, most people would say at the moment, looking at this, that it's DDoS for hire. So it's uh, on there. But if it gets to these sort of sizes, it will be a formidable enemy and have the effect, have the ability to cause a lot of harm. So how do we identify uh, Dark Nexus? Well, it's self-propagating. It uses Telnet SYN traffic on port 23 at, of random IP devices. In other words, this sets off simple random bots to go out and to actually uh, 
you know, search for anything. It go, just gets a search around around the internet until it hits a, uh, a, a device, which works. And it'll keep on hammering at port 23 until it can get access. Likewise, uh, commands try and rebooting. This is actually very interesting. It, remove, it removes permissions for accessible, so uh, to use to reboot the device. In other words, that's part of a bricking thing for the router. So in other words, if your router comes affected, it gets very difficult to even turn it off or to, or to re you have to unplug it or the rest of the thing to, uh, to actually get it back to uh, normal again. It also uses the thing of uh, IP tables to clear any IP, IP tables on the router and so on. That, uh, so it only communicates with the CNCs of the, uh, of the actual uh, botnets itself. So in other words, gross hijacking. Also, this botnet evolution we've been seeing and others have said, there's over 30 versions of this, of the software in three months. It's gone from version 4 to version 8.8 .8, uh, with a lot of new uh, brute force combinations. Uh, so port 23 is the earliest uh, one and best known across the internet in terms of remote console uh, connection. But it's also now attacking, and this is, makes it unusual as well. Normally, a botnet will only attack on one port, usually port 23. Now, this is attacking on port 23 and also port 3389. And that's Windows Remote Desktop Protocol, which obviously, as you know, Windows has for users in uh, companies. So, therefore, technicians can reset all the Windows PCs in a, in a network and so on. Whereas this uh, this is attacking port 3389 <coughs> to gain control of the Windows uh, desktop protocol. And here's a range of routers. We picked up that there's at least 12 different uh, bits of software to attack essentially any router. But the main routers that are bit is Dasan, Zone, D-Link and Asus are the plus as well, a uh, lot of code for video recorders uh, and thermal cameras. So those who are watching our video at the moment, I don't for one of these reasons, because it's very good at attacking uh, uh, in terms of video recorders and uh, camcorders and so on. So this is uh, botnet traffic. This was done a few weeks ago. This was just a an example of traffic, and this was just all the traffic coming to one ISP in Belgium. So as you can see that traffic, all those points are infected machines infected by dark nexus, yes? So shows that the range and geographical ranges spread terrifically, yes? Now, what we do as well is also what's important is where does this all come from? Who, where is this being controlled from? So part of the job is also to, if we're looking at a botnet like this, is to try and, as we say, follow the rabbits and to actually try and find out where this is all coming from. Well, we discovered that actually the picture you can see there, that is actually local to my hometown in uh, Amsterdam. It's AS, AMS1, actually controlled by Internet. So there's the key CNC addresses are these. That's the control, key hubs and the control of the button. You saw it in the earlier diagram. That's where it is right now. Now it can change. But it's well hidden in plain sight. And it's here within the EU. And it's in that, there's the address. Of things. I could actually take you physically to the rack inside that building and show you where this botnet is being controlled from right now. So the case is, is who owns this thing? Now, just interesting, this is actually controlled, uh, as you see, AS48282, uh, which is VDCNA AS, hosting technology. Now, they're in a, actually a science park in Moscow. That's the uh, ones who control those IP addresses. They own those IP addresses you just saw earlier. So. So if you go back to this, those IP addresses there, and that's uh, all controlled by that. And just for, uh, particularly for Latif and all those on the IP6 
point of view. They're using IPv6 now as attacking IPs, and they're hiding them. So just remember, this is now not gone. This has gone to a sophistication way above just IPv4. It's also for IPv6 as well. So that's the part, and that's where it is in a sunny a suburb of Moscow. It, so we would say, anyway, okay. that's the outer part, part. So if we look at this now, uh, there's also a, a name that comes up. The, in some of the earlier software for, for Dark Nexus, we came up with a name within the string, which was Greek Helios. Now, Greek Helios is known. This was blacklisted earlier, Greek Helios 21. .tk was blacklisted for malware and botnet sometimes, associated with three, two other domains on there. Uh, and, uh, and in fact, if you go to YouTube, type in Greek Helios on YouTube, you could see his uh, or their things. They actually do demonstrations of botnets and how to use them or so on. Uh, and if you want to buy the services, you go to their Instagram part or, that, or through Discord to those parts. So there's the... Uh, Maybe, maybe, now I have to say maybe, part of the background. Of course, this could be tricked as well, So, but gives you a good, interesting uh, background to that. So, this is just 22 lines of uh, uh, JavaScript, which is therefore bad bot directed to user to an exploit plaque. Uh, this is just loaded in through a router straight onto a, someone's machine once they have control of that uh, Windows functions. Here's a comparison between good and bad traffic. This is more of a general slide, but it's just interesting to note that smaller websites still have a lot of parts, but the main attack in terms of uh, bad bots is that of the, what you call Alexa MVPs, which are large websites and so on. As you can see, 27% of, uh, of, of traffic is, uh, is bad bots. And also, this is interesting slide because it shows where main data it's data centers which are often the uh, problem where where a lot of these bad bots are launched from. Uh, easy to use, easy to very anonymous use. On there, Amazon's probably on the top, but you also got OVH in France, HEG, even some Microsoft, which they used for a lot of their. Bot work, which you've been you bots have been used here on this on our call right now, and partly that's a lot of those come up as bad bots or distorted bots as well. Hetzer in Germany, DigitalOcean in the US, Free in France, and and so on and so forth. So now, one of the things you can do quite simply on a PC is therefore, you know, in terms of what's called robot text, to actually uh, uh, disallow activity coming to a PC or so on. So this is other things. Uh, but remember level three or level four bad bots can get through Capacitor, Recapacitor and so on, and through most security <coughs> devices. So beware. Now, here's the test. You'll see um, uh, address there. I think everybody should have a go if they can. So this is what's happening. Now I'm running this on a PC now, and you see this is checking my router. So it's a simple check, and it's who is mydns.com. Simple check and free and accurate. So I'm using OpenDNS, which is good. That's what I use uh, for my uh, DNS request. So, but it does show that. Uh, give you an example of one of the. Uh, I'm there, so the case is, is uh, so everybody and everybody in current, pass it on to everybody you know to check their router. Is their router being hijacked? Simple test, one uh, click on a, on a URL and you go to the thing. Uh, and obviously to ensure the routers are properly configured and properly password, uh, RDP attack prevention is you're blocking, you can block port 3389 at the perimeter firewall <clears throat> if disabled desktop service is not required, uh, even assets, which is um, uh, European uh, antivirus companies, bought out a free blue keep. That's because of this 
particular vulnerability to check whether it, it's running safe against exploitation of this vulnerability. And make sure vulnerability, uh, vulnerability patches are up to date. Uh, still the best way, and I use them all the time, every, I think everybody should do, is making sure you use the proper VPN gateway to broker all IDB connections outside your local network. So I have I use those higher level VPNs, proxies, all sorts of things. So let's uh, go on. So we also should mention what is OWASP, which I think most people will know is using the app sensor project, which is uh, reduces susceptibility to uh, automated threats and also bot traps and geo blockers. Uh, and this is actually uh, a good community effort to actually uh, uh, reduce uh, auto the responsible automated threats and mitigate attacks. So that's uh, so. Let's come to some conclusions. Currently, there's eight to ten billion. That's billion, not million. Bad bots in circulation. If you look overall, uh, an estimated cost is uh, is potentially. 600 billion per annum in just the cost of forget the attacks or forget the data breaches that's just the cost it's taking of bandwidth you know just hide just using all this bandwidth 20 to 25 percent of all the bandwidth in the world so the case is is uh is the most significant threat factor now now what can we do about it it's you know management of cyber security involves four actions we would argue Partly regulation. I hope our friends from the EU are listening. Partly uh, regulation, a technical regulation, not political. And like GDPR, it works. Uh, discovery and removal of threats, just like we do in COVID-19, track, trace, remediation, quarantine. And quarantine uh, threat traffic from sources outside of available jurisdictions. Uh, prevention via improved it. That's a classic one, which... <coughs> it's still the problem. How many people check their routers to see if they're still functioning and so on? That's the uh, that's really be, should be start to become a a very clear uh, message at the moment. Now, our argument is that it still comes down to look if if we're in whatever city you're in at the moment or uh, sitting here listening to this from. You know, the case is what would happen if you didn't clean up the garbage in that city or outside your house? You know, it's a source of disease, source of, uh, well, the argument still is, is, isn't it about time we started to take out the garbage on the internet? What we're talking about here is dark nets, is the bad bots, all of this stuff, the mouth. It's all garbage and we should get rid of it. Can we get rid of it? Yes, we can. But we need a plan to get rid of that and to hate take that as a form of thing. Otherwise, with great respect, even the uh, previous presentation in terms of 5G, that's going to be a disaster unless we can take away some of the threats. And of course, this is disease control epidemiology in the real world. Yeah. Uh, so it's a, evidence is a, a practice as well. It's a question of cleanliness and being disease resistant. So long-term combination, as we said, regulation, detection of threats, and their removal. We have to remember now, public health and epidemiology, even though we see the problems of even working out for COVID-19, but that's 150 years old in terms of epidemiology. Unfortunately, cybercrime and death threat data research is only 10 years, up to 10 years old. So, yeah, we can understand why this, from a science point of view, this is... We're not as advanced as we should be. And that I'll give you the obvious point on there is that that's what we should be doing on the internet. Uh, just as a quick uh, thing there, there's acknowledgements. Thanks for listening. That's how you can contact me. There's a great workshop coming up again, another virtual one, uh, end of August now, uh, which everybody's invited to. Was going to be in Dublin, now it's... <laughs> virtual. And there we are. And thank you for listening.